Good morning and welcome to today's Mass, Mass of Saturday, the Memorial of St. Anthony of Padua. So in this Mass, I invite you to join me in singing the entrance hymn, Table of Plenty, Table of Plenty. God invites us to this table. Warm to the peace of heaven on earth come to the table of plenty god will provide for all that we need here are the table of plenty oh come and sit at my table where sins and sinners are friends I wait to welcome the lost and only to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here at the table of plenty Who oh, come and eat without money Come and drink without price My feast of gladness will feed Your spirit with food and fullness of life Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate God's love. And in this Mass, I would like to pray for all of you, pray for your families, and pray for the intentions you are bringing to God today. Today, I also would like to pray for the husband of a dear friend who has been sick for a long time, Jerry Schoenfeld. We pray and ask that God, who knows how best to take care of his children, may take care of Jerry, may be his source of hope and comfort, that God may also be with Virginia. I'd also like to offer prayers for our dear friend, Deacon John Lynch, who has Return home yesterday. We pray that God may continue to grant him quicker and faster recovery. Pray for those who have birthdays today. Pray for those who have wedding anniversaries and other anniversaries of their lives. Pray God's blessings on you all. Pray for those who are battling coronavirus. Pray and ask that God. May grant them healing and recovery sooner and quicker. We pray for our doctors and nurses who continue to care for our sick. May God bless their ministry. We pray for our churches and pray for our pastors as we prepare to slowly return to church. That God may protect his children. That God may give us opportunity to reconnect again. If you have one, any other intentions you like for us to pray at this time, please bring them up to God. And to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
from whom all good things come. Grant us on this day as we celebrate the memorial of St. Anthony of Padua. As we call on you in our need, may his prayers bring us your help. At your prompting, may we discern what is right. And by your guidance, may we find grace to do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shepha, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelve. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha led the oxen ran after Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then he left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is, You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, you are, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold me fast. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exalts him. I set the, I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because he will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Incline my heart, O God, to your decrees, in fact, and favor me with your law. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it's God's throne, not by earth, for it is his footstool. Not by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, good morning and uh, welcome to this Holy Mass. 
on this memorial of St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony is a very well-known saint. He is venerated around the whole world for different reasons. But we will get to Anthony very quickly. Today I want us to focus on the lessons that these readings offer us. There are two lessons I'd like to project for reflection. In the first reading, we hear how Elisha, remember yesterday God told Elijah to go make Elisha a prophet to go anoint him as a prophet because Elisha, Elijah had complained that he was all the only prophet left and there was no one else and God says okay you go now and set up a new government for God's kingdom you will be like the chief prophet Elisha will be your attendant and yet he told him exactly what to do to set up the new government for God's people and so today Elijah is doing what God said for him to do. He is keeping faith with what God said to do. So he comes and finds Elisha, who is a shepherd boy, taking care of his oxen. And he throws his cloak over him. And immediately, the power of God's spirit overtakes Elisha, overwhelms Elisha. He begs for one favor from Elijah. I will do whatever God says I should do. But please, give me one moment. Let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye. That's something I want to talk about. Let me go and kiss my father and my mother goodbye. Goodbye is... It's a difficult word or a difficult phrase. And some goodbyes are more difficult than others. Some goodbyes are said in the best atmosphere imaginable to bring comfort to the one living and the one staying. And some goodbyes are said in the silence because the one living doesn't hear and the one wishing goodbye doesn't know if they are able to communicate goodbye it's even worse at this time where we are faced with this virus and hardly have the opportunity to beat a hard warming and a hard felt goodbye to people we love, people we care about, and in some cases it's done in, in just a few minutes, as it was the case with Elisha. He only asked for a moment to go say goodbye. This, there was no preparation. He didn't have time to tell them. God did not tell him ahead that he was going to be leaving. But he was going to leave, and so he begs for, begs God, give me just one moment let me go say goodbye. Unlike most of us, Elisha got his wish. He had time at least to celebrate. He kills his oxen, uses the wood to celebrate. He didn't have time to go to see his mom and dad anyway because this, this celebration he did with his workers in the farm. So he had only a portion of his goodbye wish. I'm sure he told his workers to tell his parents that they may never see him again. And he was gone, pulling God. That would sound really crazy. But that's what happened here. So when he asked Elijah, may I, may I go back? Elijah said, what have I done to you? When he realized he didn't get a yes, he decided, you know what, okay, I would just celebrate with the people I have here. God willing, they will take care of my parents and they will let them know about that. That is what a lot of people have had to deal with 
at this time where nurses become the people who transmit the good vibes for them where doctors or chaplains become the link between a family or between a family member and their loved one who is dying they have no opportunity no chance to say goodbye they now begin to depend on other channels to say goodbye and that's what was happening to Elisha he did not have the chance to say goodbye and to kiss his mom or his dad the last time he had to leave all of that to the men who were working with him in the farm who had to celebrate his farewell as he was going to be an instrument for God. Now these are opportunities for us to reflect because what is happening here may happen to you too. Sadly, may happen to you, may happen to me. Goodbyes are very hard. For some of us, we never get, get over the goodbye. Think about the people you have lost. Think about how hard that goodbye is. You try to say it and you take it back again. You struggle every day to say that goodbye, that final goodbye, and to just get over that final goodbye. It doesn't come easy. It is not easy. Everyone who have had to say goodbye have struggled. The good news is God's grace comes to help us. I think it's only with God's grace that Elisha was able to follow Elijah without going back to say goodbye to his mom or to his dad or to his siblings. He doesn't mention his siblings yet. It says mom and dad. Or maybe his siblings were part of the team working with him. But life is very tricky and life can be very fun where we are not given the opportunity to do what we want to do, to do what we feel was right to do, to feel what, to do what we feel we should have done. And that's why today is a time. We must not wait for the last day to say goodbye. That's what I learned from this story, that life may not give us a chance to say goodbye. So don't wait for the last day to tell your mom or your dad that you love them and that they matter to you. Don't wait for the last day to tell your husband or your wife that they are everything to you. Don't wait for the last day to tell your children how much they mean to you and what their presence in your life has been meant for you. Don't wait for the last day to tell a co-worker, to tell someone who has who has invested in you, has helped you, how much they have been a blessing to you. Don't wait for the last day because there may not be a last opportunity to do that. And that's why sometimes it's so difficult for us to heal from our losses. We waited for too long to be able to say to someone how much they have been a blessing to us and how much their lives have been everything that change us for who we are. And so the, more, the time you have is the time you have. And the time you have is now. For anyone that you care about, that you love, let them know how much they matter to you. It's almost like saying that goodbye before you say the final goodbye in case there's no opportunity to do that. That's the first thing I want us to reflect on. That's something that St. Anthony knew too well. Um, St. Anthony had no plan going to Italy. He was born in Lisbon. I have him in his bed place, in his bedroom where he was born in Lisbon, Portugal. So I've also been to Padua to see where he ended. So I have been to his bed place and the place of his death. So Anthony was born in Lisbon. He's, technically he's called Anthony of Lisbon, even though popularly known as Anthony of Padua. And he wasn't born Anthony, he was born Fernando Martins. So, Anthony um, becomes a young priest. And after the, the, the matter of some group of Franciscans in Morocco, 
Anthony was fascinated by the story of those martyrs and wanted to be a missionary to Morocco. So he asked for permission to do that. He was granted. So he left and joined this other that was going to send him to Morocco. And they sent him to Morocco. While on the ship going to Morocco, he first, he fell sick. Fell so sick that they feared he might die. They wanted to bring him back to Portugal for treatment. Now the ship, for some reason, was blown away and they did not end up in Portugal. They ended up somewhere in Italy. And so when they ended up in Italy, that's how Anthony's ministry in Italy started. It wasn't planned. Like Alicia, he did not have the chance to say a final goodbye to his parents. He didn't live so long. He died at 35. I doubt if he had another opportunity to meet with his parents when he left Portugal. He died at 35. And so, so like Anthony, I'm thinking about me and you and every one of us. We can also ask Anthony in case you're struggling because he knows that experience. You can ask him, Anthony, in case you didn't know that, that he too did not have the chance to say goodbye. In case you are struggling with the fact that you didn't have a chance to say goodbye, speak to this wonderful man. He and his grace can help you. From the gospel, I said I was going to say another thing from the gospel. Oath. Oath is a promise we make. And normally at the end of that oath, we call on a, super, a, power, a higher power to... A higher power to hold us accountable. We call it a higher power. And that's why, like in our pledge, we say, So help me God. At the end, we hear, So help me God. So, in a sense, we call God to help us and to also hold us accountable to fulfilling an oath. And why do we have to make oaths in the first place? Why are they necessary? They would not have been necessary if trust wasn't such a rare commodity, such a rare ingredient in human interactions and relations. We are so deficient in the trust factor. I don't trust you, you don't trust me, I don't trust the man to my left or the woman to my right, you don't trust any one of them. And so for us, with all this mutual suspicion of each other, or each other's moods and intentions. The only thing that can guarantee that you would do what you said you would do sadly becomes an oath, an agreement, a contract where someone has to pledge, if I don't do this, let whatever power that's above us hold us accountable, hold me accountable. Could be the law, could be God, could be anything. That's why there is an oath. Now, what the Lord is saying here is that you and I should be of such character and standard that there will be no need for an oath. So trustworthy, so reliable, so loyal, that there will be no need for an oath to hold us accountable to do what we said we will do. That's how much premium the Lord has or places on you and on me. That as Christians, we should not wait for an oath to compel us to do something. We should do it because of the character that we have. The character we have built under his Holy Spirit. So the question I want to leave for you right now, can you be trusted? Can you do what you say you will do? The Lord wants us to be men and women of our own words. Let your yes be your yes. Think about how many promises we make every day and how often we fail. In our prayers, we pray a lot and pray and make a lot of commitments. Whether it's in our Father or in any other prayer, I believe, we make those commitments that we never keep. When we read the Bible and we speak those words, we, we make those implicit commitments that we never really follow through. 
So, so today the Lord is reminding you how much hope and how much trust he has in you and in me to do what we say we said we will do. And I hope we would have time to reflect on the things that we have made, promises we have made that we, we didn't keep. Commitments we made that we just renegated on. And realize that God wants us to be reliable, to be trustworthy, to be loyal, to be faithful. Fidelity is important to God. As always, I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, Today, you remind us that life may never give us opportunities we so look for to say final goodbyes. Help us to treasure every moment we spend on this earth with the people you have placed in our lives. Help us to savor the sweetness of building relationships, building friendships. Help us, O oh God, to use every moment to honor you in others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, you also remind us today that as disciples of yours, you expect us to be men and women of our words, men and women of character. Help us, O oh God, to take this responsibility and this trust seriously. Help us to follow through on the commitments we have made to you and to each other. Help us, O oh God, to build a more trusting, a more reliable, and a more faithful world and church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have asked our prayers, especially those who are sick. Pray for Jerry Schoenfeld. Pray and ask Almighty God that your grace may be with Jerry. And that your healing and your mercies may be with this entire family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have birthdays and anniversaries today. Pray and ask, dear God, that you may grant them the blessings of these celebrations and the many more years to celebrate and give thanks to your holy name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. We pray for those who have family and marital struggles in their lives. Pray and ask Almighty God that you may be the peace in those families, that you may have help reconciliation prevail in those families and in those relationships, that you may help people realize how to reconcile differences and to work together for healthier and more viable relationships and marriages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have exposed themselves to this coronavirus during these moments of protest, O oh God. We ask that you may protect them. Because for those who may be sick, doctors and nurses are seriously going to be overwhelmed. We ask, dear God, that you may take care of every layer of this struggle. Help us, O God, finally to overcome this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time, those whose intentions were brought this morning to you, O God. We beg you that you may accept those intentions and please grant every favor your children are asking and desperately need. And we ask all of this and are confident that you will grant because we bring them through the hands of our blessed mother as we say hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death
Let's say, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let's say, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look kindly upon our service, O God, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity, following the examples of St. Anthony. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to the co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord left us, our Father, who 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of our peace. From me to you and your loved ones, may God's peace rest with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. As your children around the world, O oh God, prepare for this moment of spiritual communion, we beg that you may bring your body and your blood to them spiritually that they may receive the fullness of your grace in their hearts, in their minds, and in their souls this day. And through the ministry of St. Anthony, may they find grace for every need. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing what is evil and lead us to do what is right. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, looking for the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. I pray that God may give you every good grace especially that God may help meet any need that you have at this time. Through the prayers of St. Anthony of Padua, may you feel God's love and God's peace and God's answers to your concerns and everything that you brought to God here today. May St. Anthony be with you. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of St. Anthony of Padua and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.
things be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing a song to our blessed mother. We will sing the hail, holy queen, and throne above. Hail, holy queen, and throne above. O Maria, hail, mother of mercy and of love. O Cherubim sing with us the seraphim. Heaven on earth we sound a hymn. Salve, salve, salve.